Hi everyone, it's Arek from Futurely. This is our first session in our Keyshot crash course. And today we're going to be covering how to import geometry from your modeling software. And we're going to touch upon the interface a little bit. So if I go to file here and import, what you'll see uh, in the formats is that there are tons of file formats that Keyshot supports. And what you can do is just import any of these, right? And so you can see there's FBEX, there's OBJ, there's ABC, Alembic files, SATs, C4D directly. You can even import 3DMs directly and even Revit, right? So, uh, as well as Colada, so there's a lot of these, right? So, this is cool and all, but I really prefer the live link method, which uh, is possible through plugins. And those plugins are available if you go to keyshot.com, and go to resources here, and downloads, and then plugins. And you can see if it supports your favorite software, all of these are supported. You may not see ZBrush here because ZBrush is done uh, in, an, in a bit of another way. But I'm just going to be using um, Rhino for the first example. And this should be very similar throughout the other software as well. So all you have to do is click on this and download for Windows or Mac, depending on what you're using, and go from there. Since I've done that already, I'm just going to go to Rhino, and you'll see that I just have it here, and you might have it here as well. So what I really like doing is just drag this from here and take it from the header and drag and drop it into the toolbar here so I can have it nicely placed uh, with the other tools. And all I have to do is just hit this button right here, which sends my model to Keyshot. And even if I don't have Keyshot open, so even if I close this down here, what, I, what it does is it fires up Keyshot for me and it takes my model to Keyshot. You see, that's how easy it is. It's just now we have our model, our Rhino model in uh, Keyshot. And everything that's a separate material in Rhino will be a separate material here. So you can see in, our, in my material menu here, I have three materials. And that's because I had three materials in Rhino. And I have my materials that I can assign right here. If you don't have these in your interface, what you can do is hit M for the materials to pop up here. And then hit space for the scene menu to pop up over here. So now we can go to the materials here. And we can try just getting one of these materials and dragging and dropping it into our model, right? So that's how quick it is. And you can see everything that was the same material in Rhino takes the same material here. Maybe I'm just going to go to metals here. Let me go down a bit. I'm just going to take one of these perforated ones, and I'm going to just assign it to this guy right here. And you can see everything that was the same material got assigned the same material again. So that's great. And if you want to navigate in your viewport, left click will orbit. Uh, the middle mouse button will pan. And what you can do is also dolly if you use your scroll. But here you can also have like tumble, pan, and dolly in your interface. But I prefer using the clicks basically to manage that better. And another thing here would be you, that you can go over this part right here. And for your CPU usage, you can tell it to use less than 100% if you don't want to go overboard with your CPU usage. And that will slow it down your rendering, but it won't take all of your computer's juice, basically. And there's a pause. You can just pause it so that it doesn't keep rendering all the time. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep rendering now. And there's performance mode, which basically drops the quality down a bit, but it makes it basically uh, orbit much faster. And you can basically navigate your model way faster when you do that. I'm just going to 
turn it off again, and there's GPU. So if you have a good GPU uh, as a renderer, CPU is used uh, by default uh, by Keyshot. But what you can do is go to your uh, GPU button here and click it. And if you have a good GPU, that's going to be way faster than CPU. And uh, since I have a good GPU, uh, I'm just going to keep using GPU for now. But bear in mind that some of the advanced features in uh, Keyshot are still not supported by the GPU mode. So you may have a bit of uh, a lag over there. So uh, about denoising, this basically does what the name implies. You can just turn it on, and it quickly denoises your model to show you the end, something close to your end result. So you get there much quicker, right? And I don't like doing this so much, since usually I pay attention to a lot of detail here and tends to blur it. But uh, maybe when you're working and you want to get a quick uh, feedback from your model, you can turn it on again. And here you have the perspective button. So if you make it 10, your focal length is going to be uh, resulting in a much um, sharper perspective, so to say. And if you go 100%, then you're going to get more or less an uh, orthographic render from your model. I'm just going to keep it 50% for now. And basically, what we can do is add a camera. So if you like a position, maybe I like this one. I just want to keep it and save it. I can add a camera. And what that does is it adds a camera here. And if I go to my camera menu here, it's added right here. So that means that if I go ahead to my free camera and I can just orbit again and anytime I want I can just go back to that uh, camera that I just saved. That's really cool. I can even lock it so I don't move it by accident. But if I do, you can see that it here it says that it's unsaved. So what I can do is just save it or not save it at all. I can go back and come back to this model and I see that it's um, what it was before. Cool. So the way Live Link works is if I go to my Rhino again, what I can do is maybe um, I'm just going to, let's say, scale this this way. Cool. So th since we did that, I can just come here to that update and open Keyshot instance. And right away, you'll see that my model just updated right away. It didn't even take a second to think about it. So this is cool. And that's the main point of having a um, live link between your um, software, your modeling software, and Keyshot. So uh, next up is your ZBrush link. So I've been, I know you've been waiting for this, so here it goes. So this is a bot thing. Uh, it's the ZBrush and Keyshot bridge. And if you don't want to spend this much money, what you can do is just use OBJ or FB, FBX import um, that you've exported from ZBrush. But if you have this, it will make your life way easier. So I'm going to go to ZBrush now. And I have this model by Vamsi Krishna Vemuri. Check out his Instagram. So since I have this model right here, all I have to do is, if I'm using the FBX export, I can go to Z plugin here, and then FBX export import. And then you can decide which of your subtools you want to export. So if you do all, then all of your subtools sub will be exported. And if you do visible, only the ones that are visible will be exported. And if you do select it, basically, it does what the name implies. What you've selected will be exported. For now, I'm just going to go with visible. And I can just do export. And that will export my model. And I can just save it anywhere I want. And I can import it into Keyshot, no problem. But a faster way to establish a live link would be going to render here. And then with the external render that you have right here, you can specify that your external render is Keyshot. And then all you have to do is Shift-R. 
And what that should do for me is actually let me turn off my key shot. I'm gonna go back to ZBrush and I'm going to hit Shift R again and that will fire up KeyShot for me and I will have my model in there pretty soon. I prefer doing that whenever I'm trying to establish a new link. So this is great, it's right here now. We have this and we can um, give it new materials, right? And maybe for this one, I'm just gonna go with, let's say, Matt, I'm just going to type matte here and I'm just going to take this matte white and apply it to this model. Let me do the same here. And you can see what this is saying is basically that I have a separate material here coming from ZBrush. And if I apply the same material that I've applied before, it's telling, it's asking me if I want to link duplicate materials. And what that means is that if I say yes, that means that next time I want to apply a material here, it's going to be applied to both of them at once. And that's a cool thing, but maybe you want to break it again. You go to scene, and if you go to ZBrush here, that's your model set that you've imported. You, we've imported three parts. So basically what you can do is just drag your material and apply it right here as well. And that will be applied to that specific part. Cool. So if I do this again, and I do this again, it's applied separately. It's not even going to ask me. But if I do this, I want them to be linked, so I'm going to say yes. So that I don't have to um, apply that material separately every time. Cool. Let's check out other materials, maybe some liquids here. And let's take this liquid right here. We're going to jump into materials much more in the second session. So I'm not going too deep into materials just yet. So let's have this right here. All right, I think it looks pretty cool. I just want to show you another interface technique that I want to uh, demonstrate here, right here. So I'm going to go to this ZBrush model right here. And what you can see is that if I select it, it's uh, highlighted right here with an orange outline. What I can do is go to position right here. And I'm going to take the Move tool, and I can just move it around, right? This is really cool because you can keep doing that after you've imported your um, model. So that's great. And so these arrows will move your model. These circles will uh, rotate your model. This is very similar to a a lot of other gizmos and other um, software platforms. So you can come here and click scale as well and that will give you these cubes that you can use to scale your model and if you want to scale in one direction you can also use 1D scaling. And uh, you can have local or global coordinates so local will have your models gizmo but global will basically be the global XYZ coordinates that you can use. So this is cool. And what I'm going to do is finish this right there and go to my ZBrush model here and I'm going to click right click on this and I'm going to go to um, set camera target. What that does is that basically if I'm looking somewhere else right here what I can do is right click and set camera target and that will bring it to the center and whenever I'm now um, orbiting, I'm orbiting around this model right here. Another cool thing we can do here is right click on this and duplicate the model. And what that will do is basically give us a second duplicate of this model right here. Maybe I'll just scale this down a bit to make it more interesting. And I'm going to move it up. Yeah, I think this looks cooler. And so this is kind of... <laughs> continuing the modeling after we've imported, right? This is pretty cool. All right, great. So if I go back to my ZBrush model here, and let's say I'm going to change the model a bit. 
maybe I'll just soften these parts right here or like maybe let's just yeah soften these parts right here and this parts maybe I'm going to inflate some parts right here <laughs> so I'm glitching up my model right there and so yeah this looks cool what I'm going to do is uh, shift R again that's all I have to do by the way and if I go back to my Keyshot model I'll see that they're both updated right away. This is really, really cool. So we've established a live link between ZBrush and Keyshot using the bridge. Cool. Um, maybe I don't like this. I mean, I really like it actually, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna control Z here and shift R again, and that's it. This model will be updated one more time and we have what we have. All right, guys, that's it with our first session. We've covered different ways of importing and establishing live links between Keyshot and other modeling software. And we've covered some of the interface too. If you have questions, don't hesitate to leave your inquiries in the comment section down below. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you won't miss the next session, which is going to be focusing on materials. This was Arik from Futurely, and I'll see you soon in another Futurely focused session. Goodbye.